So, hello and welcome to this session of Tarot on 2020, where we're recording a series of live videos here on Facebook in the Tarot Professionals Group for the Tarot Association, um, <clears throat> covering basic ways of reading, advanced ways of reading, um, tarot cards, oracle cards, and any other uh, cartomantic method, and we'll probably branch into other forms of divination as we go along. We're also, uh, today we'll be finishing our bedtime story, which is currently um, Wake World by Alistair Crowley, that we have followed a journey of the Tree of Life um, with Lola Daydream, and I wanted to read that to people to encourage them to go and explore some of Crowley's mystical um, readings and that um, um, not to be too afraid of delving into something that sounds very abstruse and cabalistic at first glance. So we've been talking a little bit about the Tree of Life and the Kabbalah, this system um, here, and this particular session we're going to do today is on our 10-minute method of reading tarot. So if you're an absolute beginner, I'd like you to start in our previous session, which is our three-minute method, and um, then look at our 10-minute method, which we're going to cover today. And both of these methods, both the three-minute method and the 10-minute method, come from a mixture of um, NLP, which we're going to also start to cover in a lot more detail as these sessions um, wend on through the um, pandemic of 2020 and the great quarantine, the great lockdown of 2020. Um, that we're going to cover a lot more with NLP, with Kabbalah, with uh, mysticism, with the Western Esoteric Industry System, which is what I particularly teach. Um, and um, at some point we're also going to cover the uh, cube of space here um, that takes tarot into a totally different dimension, quite literally, a sort of 3D dimension. And um, I'll probably show you how to make one of these and what to do with it once you've made it. Okay, so we're going to cover that at some point as well. In terms of our bedtime reading, if I may, if um, people want to indulge me, we will be reading from a certain selection of other works, just my favourite things to read and um, things that have been read to me in the past um, by um, uh, one of my first teachers. And one of those is going to be out of um, Borges. Um, uh, and... Um, um, there's a short story in this particular collection called Labyrinths that I would like to read to you. And that's more about mysticism and divine language and the way the universe talks to us and we talk to it. And there's a beautiful short story in this um, uh, called The God's Script that I'd like, love to read out to you. And um, tomorrow we'll probably make a start with um, Italo Calvino's Invisible Cities. Um, it's a collection of very short stories, all themed on invisible cities. But there is one particular story that I think really relates to tarot. And there's another story about household spirits and family spirits, um, which in uh, the ancient uh, Roman world were called the Lares and the Penates. And um, uh, I've worked with the Lares and the Penates for a long, long time. And um, um, Calvino has a wonderful story about them that really brings them to life and what they are. And I thought as well, because a lot of us are um, uh, self-isolating or um, shielding or on a lockdown or quarantining, um, uh, stay-at-home orders and so forth, that... Um, it might be a good idea to find out about lorries and penates because they can add an awful lot um, to your uh, ritualistic and spiritual life um, because they really do um, have a presence and I'd like to tell you a story, a personal story about um, how that worked for me as well at some point. So today we're going to do our 10 minute method and um, um, what I want to do is launch into it as if I was teaching it as a 10-minute method. 
yesterday we did the three minute method but I sort of explained what we were doing as we went along so today I'm going to switch that around I'm going to teach you the 10 minute method as if I was just teaching it to an absolute beginner and um, <clears throat> as my example deck I'm going to use the wild unknown um, by Kim Kranz uh, which is a very very popular deck um, uh, she managed to do a deal with urban outfitters I believe um, to stock it and it became uh, very well selling and um, um, a lot of the images have been used for tattoos and uh, things like that so it's become uh, very well known and very popular you can see the sort of style of the deck um, from this card but I'd like to imagine that I've got someone in front of me they've um, turned up with this deck I know nothing about it I mean I don't personally use this deck at all and um, <clears throat> it's very good for teaching this method because um, some of the cards have got um, sort of quite sparse imagery on them they're they still symbolic but they're quite sparse um, and the 10 minute method is ideal for learning for the Marseille deck for playing cards for any other um, system so for those who um, <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> Um, right, the um, lares and the penates. Okay, so um, I'll write that down actually. So it's lares and um, penates, but don't worry, we'll go into them in more detail um, over time. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, and I've misspelled that because I'm, I'm trying to type underneath a microphone that's on my um, on my keyboard. Yeah, um, uh, this particular deck, um, it, it's actually got very thin, well it, it's sort of okay, but um, um, they sort of stick together and stuff, but that's probably the way um, that they've been stored. So, right, 10 minute method, the only thing I do want to explain and go back to yesterday to look at the 3 minute method and that will give you an idea of the approach we're taking and um, that will explain um, today. But for those who have been watching all of the videos so far, you realize that the 10 minute method is based on the tree of life, um, the minor arcana down the tree of life, um, the major arcana on the paths, and the four worlds representing the four suits, and the four levels representing the four ranks of the court cards. Okay, so that's the structure that's underneath this. The three minute method is based on an NLP model of how experienced tarot readers read. The 10 minute method was the first method I came up with for teaching and that's based purely on Kabbalah. But we don't tell people that, so, so that's the trick. So if you're ready then I'll begin with our 10 minute method and um, I'll go as sort of fast as I can and if you've got any questions we'll explain it afterwards. But Again, the idea is that um, you could line up a whole load of teachers, I'd be one of them, you bring in a whole load of beginners off the street who never learnt tarot, and you'd give every teacher 10 minutes with a total stranger to teach tarot. You'd go into a room, the person would come out, and then they'd have to do a reading. And so this is what I'd do in my 10 minutes um, in order to teach someone. And yesterday, um, it was the challenge of how I would do it in three minutes and that's the way we teach tarot in three minutes okay so ten minutes so we don't start with tarot we don't start with Kabbalah what we start with is ready steady go so I'd like you to think of a creative process that you engage with in your life one that has a start a finish and maybe a middle bit you know when you can start it you know when you finished it it could be as simple as making a bed writing a book, composing a poem, uh, making a dress is um, uh, one I'll use as an example, um, uh, doing the dishes, it could be anything that has a start and finish and produces something. Gardening for example, although that's a cyclic process it does have a sort of you know I'm going to sow a lawn or whatever the process may be, something creative. Okay, so think of that now the first thing I'd like to ask you about that process is think about 
how you know that it's the start of the process? How, how do you know that you're going to start? Do you suddenly wake up and think, I need to make a dress? Um, do you immediately have the whole idea in your head? How does it start? And as you think about that, I want you to think about how do you know when it's finished? See, making dress isn't really finished when you um, finish making the dress, it's when you wear it to the party. It's an important difference. You need to know the start and the end. Okay? So we ask people to think about that, and then I say, right, what is it like in the middle? How do you know what the middle stage of that process is? So it could be making a cake. What is roughly the halfway stage of that? Okay, so think about that. And at the same time, <clears throat> think about um, what the challenges are. And you'll realize there's a little overlap to the three minute method in this. What are the challenges that you face? Is it too late to change it? Can you still make changes if you taste it halfway through? Can you change the taste of it if you're halfway through making a dress? Can you go back to the beginning and so on? What is it like the moment before you finish? The moment before you finish? Um, can you change it? Is it too late? Is it really coming into focus? How do you know you're almost finished? So really get a feel of that with something you are familiar with already. And this goes back to our skills thing. Something you already know about. Something that you're maybe very good at. You know the beginning, you know the end, you know the middle point, you know roughly the bit before you finish and you know roughly maybe what it's like just after you start it. Maybe there's a lot of energy in it and you're getting going with it and you're not even thinking about finishing it. You're not worried about starting it because you've already started. Now, to make it easier, we have 10 fingers. So I want you to imagine that number one is the start stage and number 10 is the finish stage, okay, over here. So you go one to 10, and so the middle stage is stage five in the middle, okay? So just mentally think one to 10, one is the start, 10 is the finish, five is the middle of your creative process. Make sense? Good. Now, to help you read tarot, and this is where we introduce tarot, we're gonna split the world into four areas. Now, if you split everything into four areas, they're going to be very broad so that's fine we'll take that so one area is um, uh, resources one area is thinking one area is emotions and the other area is lifestyle okay and to remember these areas we have elements and to remember the elements we have objects so you only need to remember these four things for our 10 minute method ones are things that you hold like a walking stick and they allow you to go forwards. They're your values, how you live your life, what you lean on. Coins or pentacles are how you spend your resources, your time, your money. They buy you things that you, you enjoy, so they're about health as well. Um, they're things that you um, pass on to your family. You give people pocket money or you had pocket money when you were a child. That's all to do with coins. So that's money, time, family, resources, blah, blah, blah. Cups is like the big gushy emotions of the water and, and the swirling cups and so on. So just think love, the emotions, relationships, all of that. And um, what else are we left with? Swords. So they, they cut things. They decide one to another thinking so how many minutes are we we're four, four minutes in so far okay so that's 10 things 10 stages of a creative process in four worlds so the five stage in the world of money coins would be what and then we ask people to map their creative process knowing what a five stages or halfway stages to the world of money and they'd say things like well you've sort of halfway invested your time and energy but it's not quite come out yet so it's still troublesome you're still trying to sort things out but it's halfway and that's great halfway in the world of money five coins brilliant so that's 40 that's 40 cards they've already learned but they don't know it yet so now we have to do the um court cards and then we say so you've got 10 stages of the creative process you've got four worlds that you've learned your four worlds, 
should really have four levels of energy. You don't want to know just where you've got to in the creative process. You need to know the level of energy that you're, you're operating at. Is it high energy, low energy? And the easiest way to remember that is by people. You know the difference of energy, and we say this to, to a group or to a total stranger, um, between a young person and an elderly person. Okay? You know the difference of energy stereotypically between a man and a woman. You know, women are associated with um, some feminine energies, um, uh, intuition, um, multitasking, and so on and so on. Men are often associated with direct, cold logic and, and so forth. Um, and single-mindedness. But we have those four levels of energy. Now, those four levels of energy apply in the four worlds. So a king in the world of coins, now you've already learned the four areas of the world, so you just need to apply the energy. What's the sort of king-like energy in the world of coins? And people will say, well, it's a, a man, it's a masculine energy, it's controlling, it's powerful, and it's in the world of, of money. So therefore, it's a controlling energy in the world of money. Great. What about a young person's energy in the world of swords? And they know that swords are thought. Um, a young person's energy is a page. So that's a young energy in the world of thought. So it's someone, loads of new thoughts, loads of thinking. They are not um, 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 really long-term planning or anything. They're just thinking of what's in front of them. Okay, so we are now um, uh, seven minutes in. Okay. So that's the that's 16 court cards learned because it's four times four. So four times 10 does all of the um, um, minor cards and four times four does the court cards. The only thing we have to now learn is the um, major cards. Now the major cards are very easy because the major cards are archetypes, but well, they're not really, they are images of archetypal um, realms and so basically they are as simple as what's on the card so for our 10 minute method we say it's as simple as what's on the card the card strength means strength the card with the blasted tower on means whatever you associate with the blasted tower if you've got a deck that you can't tell what the blasted tower is even by the title then you've it's a very bad deck indeed um, you have to be able to tell the, the archetypes from the major arcana. If it's the fool, then it's foolishness. If it's the magician, then it's magic. If it's the empress, then it's um, being an empress. It's being a mother. It's being growth. You should be able to recognize, any human being should be able to recognize the, uh, the major arcana because they are, by definition, archetypal. If the deck doesn't allow that, then, it's, then the deck has failed. It's, it's not really a proper tarot deck. Okay, and that's it. And we have now learned um, how uh, nine minutes, 19 seconds, all um, um, 78 cards. And then we demonstrate that by doing the following. And we say, so, for example, if it was the eight, the eight stage, so five, six, seven, eight stage in the world of cups, so the eighth stage in the world of emotions, what would that stage be like, do you think? And we ask people to think about that. Now we do this first. We, we do, this is very important. And if you look at the three minute method, you'll see why. We tell them, we don't show them anything. We just say the eight and we hold our fingers up, the eight or write it down on, on the flip chart. I find it very difficult to work without a flip chart behind me. This is why I've got my flipboard. Um, so the eighth stage, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my hands in, in the screen and um, I'm getting my actual hands wrong. So the eighth stage, that's my left hand, um, not over there. So the eighth stage in the world of emotions, what's that like when you get to the eighth stage? The eighth stage, what is that like in the world of emotions? Well, you've sort of got quite far with it, but there's still two steps left to get to the finish, to the end. So that sort of means that um, 
um, it, it might be quite worrying to have got almost there, like um, to our eight stage. But, but emotions don't really like to be at the eight stage. They like to be right at the beginning or right at the end. Um, and it's the same with, with um, yeah, so almost done with emotions or almost full of emotions. Exactly. And then when people have talked about it and thought about it, which they can usually do very quickly, we then say, wouldn't it be good if there was a picture of that? And then we show them a deck with the picture of the Eight of Cups on it. And they go, oh yeah, God, that's a picture of that. A stage of almost being full of emotions, but they can still be ruined. And what is it like to invest all of your emotions to the Eight stage and in, not to complete, not to go beyond the Eight stage? You know, to lose um, snatch defeat from the um, jaws of victory. And there we have a picture of it. And people go, oh, God, oh, yes, it's great. There's a picture of what I was thinking about. And that's what you need to teach people. They need to have the thinking first and then have the picture as an anchor for their own knowledge, for their own intuition, for their own voice, for their own experience of an eight of pentacles. And then they don't read from the decks ever. They always read from themselves using the deck as a tool. And this is why we teach it that particular way around in Tarosophy. Because I want people to read from themselves first, even though, yes, there's a model in the teaching process, but the cards will always be that structure. And as long as the pictures are there, that's fine. But of course, what it means is that you can then look at any deck. So if I said to someone, OK, the one stage in the world of lifestyle and ambition, what would that be like? And people would say, well, it's right at the beginning. It's full of energy and so on. And then you show them the eight of ones and they go, yeah, yeah, I can read that. That's 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 fine. So after less than 10 minutes, you can then give that person a three card reading and say, so for example, if I told you um, past, present and future in a situation, um, let's take um, um, just some random cards here. Um, so the world um, we'll go for. So if we then gave them those three cards to read as the past, present, future, they would say, well, the past is the world. And from the simple rules that you have to stick with, a major card is just what it says. So the past was like the world. I had the world. Um, so you'd say this person had the world at their fingertips. The present, they got to that eighth stage. So um, um, they know it's the Eight of Cups, and like we've just said, it's um, quite full on, but um, there's still time to walk away from it. But um, they probably uh, got so far with something and then been blocked from it, and everything's now ruined. So their future card, Ace of Wands, Ace is the beginning, Wands is lifestyle. So I have to have a new lifestyle that is totally brand new to get out of this situation because I used to have the world, or thought I had the world at my fingertips. That person can now do in 10 minutes any reading for any question with any spread with any deck, because this deck wouldn't even need to have pictures on in order for them to say, even if it only had written on them, the um, six of wands, they would know it's the sort of sixth stage that was just after the middle, so you're getting your bearings um, say six of swords for example you're getting your bearings it's halfway through just after halfway you're setting your sight on the end and you've got it's in the world of thought so it's like you're setting your ideas in motion and you and they'll be able to do that instinctively they would not need to know um, the picture for example on the uh, Wade Smith deck that has um, a ferryman with a woman and a child on a boat going forwards, um, which is basically setting your thoughts in motion. They wouldn't need to know the Kabbalah, they just need to know the 10 minute method. 
Okay. So um, if this is freezing for um, people, I'm hoping that the recording will actually have um, um, be slightly less frozen. Okay. So now with the um, uh, Wild Unknown Tarot, I've used that as an example because it has sparse images. So um, it's a good example for this. A Marseille deck is another good example. Um, we can teach the 10 minute method and it will work perfectly for the Marseille deck. It's a good way of starting. But then, of course, you can then go and study what the artist has written about their images and add that as a new layer on top. You can then study more about the Kabbalah, add that as a new layer on top. You can then study more about myths and uh, dream symbolism and imagery, add that as a level on top. You can then find out for yourself that, say, the Five of Pentacles often comes up for medical professionals who have devoted a long time to studying in deferment of immediate income in order to get more income later on, a vaster income later on. And then you'll build up your own system of language with your own cards and your own decks and your own experience with your readers. OK. Now, um, uh, Dell has just asked about the 10 minute method. The 10 minute method is in um, Terosophy and there's a little table for you to sort of fill in um, in order to go through these stages. And then I've also explained what each stage um, is more specifically as well. Um, all of the methods that we're doing in all of these videos are in our books and in our course and so um, you can go from anywhere between Tarot Flip, which is a little pamphlet size book with um, single tarot card meanings in it, all the way to the Hecademia course on the Tarot Association site, which is a two-year tarot course, and it has about 110 hours of video uh, that was recorded every week for two years uh, without without a break every week um, we recorded a class and um, that takes you through every aspect of tarot reading the history oracular language uh, practical readings Jungian symbology numerology there's um, a module on the thoth the way it's smith and so on and so on um, so you can go from uh, tarot flip, terosophy, um, all the way through secrets of the way it's Smith, secrets of the Thoth tarot, all the way through to the academia. There's a course or a book for you somewhere amongst that, and all of the details are on tarotassociation.net. Tarotassociation.net. Okay, so um, that's our 10 minute method. Um, and um, yeah, soon we'll all be um, using the cube of space for complex astral travel through the tarot cards before we know it. Um, you know, we don't have to um, leave, um, you know, we don't have to look out the window to see an entire universe, that is for sure. Okay then, so um, we're going to um, finish off with our um, bedtime story. I wanted to keep today's session very short and sweet um, because the 10 minute method is deliberately tight um, in teaching. Um, and we're going to finish our last paragraph in um, Moon, um, I keep saying Moon Child, and I always wake world, but uh, Moon Child is another um, fun book by Alistair Crowley. Although I would recommend, if you're interested in magical fiction, um, Dion Fortune, her books, uh, The Goatfoot God, um, the, uh, the Sea Priestess, The Moon Priestess. Um, they're, they're very evocative. Um, uh, for me, they have a lot of nostalgia because it was the first few books I read um, on occultism. And um, the whole idea of the sort of mystical uh, sea priestess, the moon priestess, the, um, um, the fog shrouded British Museum where occult investigators would go and um, uh, explore the mysteries were, were very evocative uh, to me as a, as a, as a. So, 
So weight world, we are literally almost at the end of it, like literally really at the end of it. Um, we've gone entirely up the tree of life and you will find in Kongsan packs there are several other um, sort of sections in it and they're all full of illusion and symbology and tongue-in-cheek symbolism and so forth. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd start with Dion Fortune and then maybe work up to some of the Crowley stuff. But I wanted to, to show you this, read you this, because it's a good opportunity for me now, whilst we're all trapped inside our own houses, um, it's a bit like the Jehovah's Witnesses sort of coming to every door because they know everyone is stuck in the side. Um, to maybe open up some of Crowley's material because I think sometimes people are a bit terrified of it or they don't even think to read it or when they do they think he's just being very overly complex for no reason and he, he isn't, he is sort of but there's a layer underneath that where there's really useful information just under one layer of symbology you only need this diagram and um, a pack of tarot cards to really follow through roughly um, what's happening in wake world so here we go and um, leave my glasses on for this just let me put the book here So we got to um, the fall um, and we were told um, that really the fall is the man who meant to wake up and did wake up. So that this, the first house, his, his house, he is the old king himself and so are you. So he wouldn't care what anyone thought he was. And we continue. Really. All the passages to the first three houses are very useful. All the dream world and the half dream world and the wake world are governed from these three passages. I began to see now how very unreal even the wake world is because there's just a little dream in it. And the right world is the wide, wide, wide wake world. My lover calls me little Lola Wide Awake, not Lola Daydream anymore. But it is always Lola because I am the key of delights. I never told you about the first two houses and really you wouldn't understand. But the second house is grey because the light and dark flash by so quick it's all blended into one. And in it lives my lover and that's all I care about. The first house is so brilliant, you can't think. And there too is my lover and I, when we are one. You wouldn't understand that either. And the last thing I shall say is that one begins to see that there isn't really quite a wide, wide, wide wake world till the serpent outside has finished eating up his tail. And I don't really and truly understand that myself. But it doesn't matter. What you must all do, first, is to find the fairy prince to come and ride away with you. So don't bother about the serpent yet. That's all. Alistair Crowley uh, wake world um, thank you so much for indulging my um, pleasure in reading it to you um, I hope that it has intrigued you at the very least to um, uh, read it there's a PDF in the file section of the Tarot Professionals Facebook group um, off wake world and um, grab a tree of life diagram grab a pack of tarot cards sit down and have a go at reading through it yourself and following the journey of the tree of life to see where the changes are in the spiritual journey to see what the culmination of the spiritual journey is and how tarot illustrates 
through Kabbalah and correspondence, the spiritual journey and the initiations that we go through on that journey itself to the very height of the tree of life itself. So, um, yeah, um, I know for a lot of people that it has been um, a rough couple of days and um, I'm pretty much predicting um, and everyone else is that it's going to be a rough couple of weeks ahead for uh, just about everyone and some of us are in better conditions at the moment than others. Um, my thoughts do go out to to just everyone really. Um, um, there are very tragic scenes being played out but very heroic scenes as well so wherever you can help, help wherever you can stay safe, stay safe and um, you know uh, we will get through this I'm, I'm absolutely sure of that and whatever nudge this gives to us then we'll be remembered for what we did during the time of this and we will remember it ourselves so it is important that we know people by what they do at this particular time um, in our lives. So um, tomorrow we will be um, looking at putting tarot cards together to make a story and then I think I will read um, um, uh, from Invisible Cities a short story by Italo Calvino and um, we will take our readings from there. If you've got any questions, um, any subjects for me to cover whilst um, you've got me then um, please just pop them in the thread or also um, pop them in the group as well and um, that'd be most appreciated um, as well to guide me along the way so take care of yourselves take care of each other take care of um, complete and utter strangers at this point and um, we'll see you tomorrow take care everyone bye for now